welcome to this week's edition of the Real Wrestling Podcast. My name's Jamie, as you all know, and today I am joined by a very evil man, really. That's an evil, evil man in the wrestling world, outside of the wrestling world, is so lovely, but you didn't hear that from me. Today, I am joined by the hunter, Bryak Strong. Yay! Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Hello. Really great to see you. I, I didn't tell people you were lovely, honestly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden. No, honestly, <laughs> genuinely though, like you are your wrestling persona. It's one of those where you like. I I was scared when I first saw you. I'll be honest. And then you bring out a shirt with a Mister Man character on. You can't get two more opposite than that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Show both sides. Oh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, how are you? Are you okay? I'm very well, very well indeed, yeah. yeah. Uh, tired, but keep going. Do you know, I think everybody's tired lately because I think every podcast I've done, it's either been me that's been tired or the person I've been talking to and we're all just like, what are we doing? Like, can we just go to bed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why are we up this late? Surely we should be in bed by now. It's getting on, you know, we're getting old now. Exactly, I'm getting the age now, you know what I mean? You know, 10 o'clock bedtime is the maximum. I'm 33. At half past six, I want to be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just leave me to go and ferment in bed. I'll be fine. Anyway, random stuff. So, uh, I last saw you. When was it? It was at Future Shock. Yes. Yep. The other week. I can't even remember what day of the week we're on right now. <laughs> it wasn't the weekend just gone. Well, hang on. Right, where am I opening my days? It was a couple of weekends ago, right? Mid February. Yeah, mid February. I want to say. Yeah, yeah, that that makes some that. form of sense. And. Yeah. Obviously, uh, by the time this goes out, it will have already happened, but this weekend coming up is For the Love of Wrestling. And obviously, you know, Future Shock will be at For the Love of Wrestling. Yourself will be at For the Love of Wrestling, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited about it. It's a very good weekend. So, you have you got a match this weekend? You have, haven't you? I have, yes. I'm wrestling Gangrel. That yeah, was it. I knew that was a big one. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, very special. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be something... Uh, very different. I mean, for wrestling's been kind of, I'd say, my WrestleMania, I want to say, here for the last sort of three years, is where I debuted, uh, yeah. Future Shock, and my first ever debut in the wrestling ring. Um, and then kind of it's been each year, over the last three years out of four, uh, for wrestling. And it's been one of those where it's kind of just got better and better as it goes along, you know what I mean? And, uh, wrestling someone who I saw debut on TV in, what, 1998. Um, yeah. I remember you know, the brood entrance is obviously iconic and uh, you know seeing Gangrel debut then and now you know so many years later 26 years later kind of going to be wrestling in, in three days time is a bit it's a bit mind blowing I was going to say how much are you shit in yourself right now <laughs> yeah just a little bit just a little bit you know what I mean uh, yeah some caliber of wrestling mean, someone who's been there and done it all and seen it all and especially in that time when I mean, wrestling was mega yeah you know, sort of like attitude area so you know it's really, really good, you know. So excited! I, mean, really I, I am genuinely hoping that Gangrel and Forbidden Planet come out to a brood entrance. Oh, it's got to happen, hasn't it? It's got to happen. I swear, if that doesn't happen, I want a refund. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I will be so so angry, and I, I will probably go and shout at people, and not not at you guys because I ain't <laughs> fighting nobody. I will just go and shout at people who don't, who can't kill me, you know, by just looking at me. <laughs> Oh, so speaking of, um, obviously, for the love of wrestling, I mean, by, like I said, by the time this goes out, it will have happened. Um, and I know we'll have all had an amazing weekend. Uh, but obviously, apart from um, the show, uh, you know, you guys wrestling and everything, what else um, are you looking forward to uh, for the love of wrestling? I mean, Scott Simon's there. That's something to behold, isn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of them where the whole weekend has always been kind of just of that crazy weekend, crazy Saturday afternoon walking around and just seeing everyone around, you know what I mean? Us, some of the rest of the past have been handless for people as well. I've never done it, but you know, everyone's been, you know, different people who they've handled over the sort of last three years. And yeah, just walking around that day and just seeing everyone, you know, and then you kind of get to chat to them as they're walking around and then they might come backstage and stuff while we get ready for the few shot show, you know. And I think when I debuted, I mean, I debuted in front of MJF and Billy Gunn. You know what I mean? It's just it's mad. Yeah, um, they can't have really thrown you under the bus any further than that, could they? No, exactly. Hey, no, yeah. 
Yeah. Did you first go? MJF and Billy Gunn, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that whole weekend is just, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing weekend of wrestling. And, you know, uh, I'd be there even, you know, I went to the first World Wrestling in, in 2019, so before I was actually, you know, debuted or anything like that, or even, I think, Huey Future. Uh, I, w- I went as a guest that weekend, you yeah. know, met the NWO and all that kind of stuff, and I picked to be there. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a great weekend, and, and, you know, everyone who can get there should be there, and uh, having a great time. It's going to be a really good weekend. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the first one where I've done the full weekend, because last year I just did the Sunday, and before that I just hadn't gone. Um, so now I'm just like, I'm looking forward to like the Future Shock show, I'm looking forward to, you know, doing both yeah. days. Like, not working, but still, it's like, Oh, my favorite thing again. is the, panel. the, the panels are the favorite thing for me. The panels do it for me. I think, you know, I just haven't seen them in the ring and then just have like, in them conversations about what they've done, what they've, all the trials and tribulations of being a wrestler. Uh, I think they're the best thing for me, you know what I mean? Because, you know, a lot of it is in lines, queuing, getting your pictures taken. But for me, yeah, I've always been just standing around them in the arena and just listening to the people in the ring talking, some of the legends of the wrestling world. And that's yeah. kind of my area. I mean, I was still there most of the day listening to those uh, stories being told. Oh, so I know where to find you then if I need you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and over to that bit, just right, come on, you can help me move boxes. <laughs> <laughs> at least at least I'll have, you know, some muscle to hand. It'll be fine. Yeah, why? <laughs> oh, lovely. So, um, speaking of Future Shock, um, you know, having all these shows coming up, we've got, like, literally, we got sent the show list and I looked at it and went, holy shit, like, how many shows do you guys want to put on in a year? Like, yeah, it's quite a lot this year. MMU and then the summer, uh, Stockport. And, like, I've looked, I've put all the dates, obviously, on a big spreadsheet for us and everything. I'm just like, I've got to work out how I'm doing all these. And obviously, the last one, as you know, I had to bring my daughter. So, expect to see her at every single show now because she's yeah. Like, genuinely, I think she wants one of your shirts with the Mr. Man on it because she looked at it and went, Mommy, I like that. And then, so yeah, so. All these future structures that are coming up, you're just going to have a random four-year-old running about the place. Oh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> Please, don't hit her with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can if you want. Just say it was an accident. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that last that show I was still doing is watching as well with my daughter and um, yeah, cause I was on the show. Um, and, you know, I saw them both really round, you know, trying, <laughs> trying, to look at, trying to control kids as well when they try to get things done. So, yeah, I know about it as well fun but it, it, it's great fun watch like do you not think it's amazing watching your kid watch something that you love with a passion Definitely. yeah uh, because again yeah. my, my daughter's not really into wrestling but um yeah. you know she'll come and watch since i started wrestling she said oh I'll come and watch you and then she said oh i'll watch a bit more just watch a bit on the television and stuff like that so yeah she's uh started getting more into it you know the three-year-old not as much yet but the uh nine-year-old is definitely getting a bit more into it i'm started young like literally like i said alana's four she loves it Zach's only 19 months old. He doesn't have a clue what's going on, but he'll just sit and clap quite happily. So I'm taking that as a win. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the next thing is to bring uh, my four, the three-year-old to the wrestling show. She's not seen a wrestle yet. So I think that's uh, one of the things for this year. Bring her. Bring her and I'll bring yeah. the four-year-old and we'll just let them loose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's like, genuinely, she now says that she wants to wrestle, like she wants to tag team with Harley Hudson. And she wants, well, she, she's now friends with Helen Campbell. She wasn't initially because the first match she saw was Helen versus Harley Hudson, so that didn't go well. But now she's Helen's <laughs> friend, so she wants to have, like, team up for both of them and, like, beat anybody else up. So your three-year-old can join in the group, you know. We'll, oh, definitely, yeah. She's, take uh, a stable, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's definitely with me. She's a little one. So, yeah, she'll run around. She's a uh, winter anything. <laughs> so... What have we got like coming up for you? Obviously, you know, you had that monumental feud last year with Tony Wright, and like genuinely, that feud was absolutely incredible. Like that final match that you guys had, I was genuinely fearful. Like I thought one of you was going to go home extremely hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, me- looked painful. Yeah, we had a we had a, that match was amazing. It was also my it was my first kind of a Noel's Bird style match, so you know, doing that was amazing. Do it with Tony, it's brilliant because I mean he's a really great guy and he's, you know, he's making waves everywhere at the moment. Um, I think the feud in general, like I say, um, we you don't see as many long term feuds in Asian wrestling as much anymore. I think we we did that from 
we went into November, so the first time we started off his out acting on the, the, the first MU show at Food Shop in um, November 2022. Then we ran the whole year uh, with me, Golden Tony, essentially. We had a match in June in, uh, or July, I think it was, in Stockport, and then led into this final match uh, that we had in November. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great year, you know, yeah, it was a great sort of breakout year for myself and uh, just a great feud in general, you know what I mean? Uh, to end the year as well after that, because then I came back in, the, in December, and to have a, sh- a little shot at the few shot t- title against uh, Joe. So yeah. I just cemented that year for me, really. It was kind of a, it was a really good year. And like I said, the feud made it as well. You know, what they made it as well. I mean, that, that, like, that, that feud was absolutely incredible. And I think it was made better by some of the videos that were posted as well, because there was one where you attacked Tony and a woman, like, it was a random woman, wasn't it? It was just like, is that a <laughs> Yeah, feeling that's how the team shot PC. Yeah, she uh, walked past and she's just come out of the uh, bar next door. And uh, just as, as we started doing the uh, thing where I attacked Tony, she said that was a legit fight. Uh, it was about to ring the police and stop this, stop that. Uh, and that's just sort of, sort of burst out laughing really after it kind of thing. And just, you know, and she realised. Yeah, I honest, I think that just like accentuated that feud so much because when I saw that video, I, just, I wet myself because I was like, right, there's no way they've got somebody to legit like scream like that that was that was a proper scream of oh shit what is going on and i was like the cat have hired somebody to do that like that has got to be like just some random person <laughs> and then when i found out it was i was like glorious <laughs> yeah just by chance just by chance it worked better i mean talking of videos as well you know we had that we, we did a really good uh and the editor who obviously is around a lot in pro wrestling in the, in the world, um he did the promo video for me and tony where we was, where tony was walking towards the union uh, I mean, I uh, walking down uh, near the PC. We filmed some great shots to have a, put a, a montage video together for for that match, which was shown just for the match. And then it was on socials as well. Uh, I think that was uh, the, that's one of the one of the major ones we've seen in future shot this year, where we kind of had a, a good montage video as well before, and it was good quality. And I'm sort of I'm doing an amazing job with that to build that match, just for happen as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I still need that chair. The chair that you you did, <laughs> the arrive won't leave. But you made you did two, didn't you? Because one of them went wrong, and I asked you for that chair, and I still don't have that chair. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's my spare one just in case. But yeah, um, I'm still not sure what to do with the chair. Yeah, it might make a reappearance in the, in the near future, but we'll we'll see. Um, I've still got the chair. So right ahead with it, sign it, and then we'll raffle it off. Definitely, <laughs> we'll race definitely. for something. <laughs> the deal, definitely. <laughs> uh, like. Genuinely, just the journey you have been on in wrestling now, like you said, you've not even been wrestling for that long. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, I love all you guys, I really do, but I also hate you for the fact that you have managed to pick up this sport and this, you know, this athleticism and all around storytelling ability in such a short space of time. I hate you for that, but at the same token, I absolutely love you for it because it's just like you've brought more of my love of wrestling out like coming to the future shock shows and you know going to other shows um like where i can it's just amazing to see just how talented so many people are in british wrestling because years ago when i was growing up there was nobody really and you know and now like i get the joy of seeing you guys you know and you have some of my favourite people, like there's you, there's um, Dr. Proctor, there's Prince Pele, you know, Sam Bailey, so many people. And I just think, how the hell have we got so many talented people in just a very small space? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very much saying, because if I, if I had took this up a lot, lot sooner, I would have done it. But I don't remember back in, you know, when I was sort of 2021, 20, I don't remember there being this many sort of training schools out there as there is now, compared, you know, especially in the Northwest, there's so many different... You know, future shots you've got other ones around as well um and over in Liverpool and stuff uh that are training some really good wrestlers at the moment and I don't remember that being a thing as much 15 years ago it probably was but maybe not as mainstream maybe um and I wish I had seen it then and kind of got into it a lot sooner because I've kind of jumped in a bit a bit older than I'd like to have done um, I'm going all right so it's all right you know but um yeah I've sort of a it took it a long, in a sort of a longer time to do it, get into it, than I, than I would have liked to in the, in the sort of, uh, had I seen this a bit earlier. Like I say, the DDP started when he was like 35, so, you know. Exactly. Anyone can that. do it. I do. Yeah, exactly. 
uh, and and honestly, like it's one of those where, like I said, you don't see you don't see like in your performance or anybody else's who's only done it for a small amount of time. You don't see that because, like you said, you've been trained at Future Shock, and you know, like Sam and you know Lizzie and all, all the other trainers. I, I'm sorry, I don't know all the names and everything, but uh, like they've done such an amazing job in. Like having you trained as an all-round performer because you've got the talent in the ring, you've got the storytelling ability. You know, it's not like they've just gone right. Here's what you need to know in the ring, and that's it. You know, they've no. not just left you high and dry. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, my, my biggest concern when I got into the so like you know, getting to the point where I was thinking, oh, I'm going to debut at some point in the near future. Um, because I've never been great at my imagination kind of thing, and like the whole character thing was always my kind of worry. It's like, I don't know what to be as a character. I don't know how to. Be, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an actor, you know me, I've never been that kind of inclined sort of thing. Um, I was okay, I've always been okay with the physical stuff. I've done karate, I've done, you know, rugby for a couple of years as well, so I've done a bit of everything. But then, um, so I was a little okay with the physicality of it. But then I was getting worried when I get to the point where I've got to cut the kind of character now, and that's, so you get that, it's kind of like that's the other, that's the last hurdle kind of thing to make it is something. Um, and I kind of went down this, you know, I mean, my characters came from, Kind of a, you know, all, all stole cold Steve Austin sort of thing. It's it's a, an exaggeration of yourself, essentially. I went down that route for myself, and it, it worked in the end. So I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, the the future shot PC has been brilliant for me and the and for um, you know, all the others you, you mentioned there as well. And the fact that they yeah, they make you the whole round. You know, we have promo classes, we have discussions just informally about character development. You know, we talk about matches and match structure and all that kind of stuff, and also the train as well alongside that. It is. It just made me an all round person. And you know what? We've made some really good mates, and that's kind of the biggest thing for me as well. You know, it's an amazing journey. But the friends I've made within that as well, and kind of the community I've got involved in now, is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, that's another good thing about British wrestling as well, because years ago, like growing up, all you ever heard about the wrestling business was that everyone was out for themselves. You know, everyone wanted that top spot, and you know, you couldn't really trust people. This, that, and the other, and you don't see that really in British wrestling like now especially it's, it's like everybody roots for everybody else everybody wants everybody else to do well and I mean they want themselves to do well but they don't do that at the expense of somebody else you know everyone roots for everybody and it's, it's such a wonderful community to be a part of because it's just like nobody really has a bad word to say about anybody that they're working with and like there's no bitching when you're there at a show and you know everyone's just having fun and it, it's absolutely amazing like do you find going into different locker rooms it's a different dynamic or do you think it's the same where you've been right and yeah i mean i've always had positive experiences i'm honest i've never not really come across many kind of sort of bad experiences within the wrestling community uh in my experience like say i mean my main experience has been with Future Shock, so I've sort of, you know, I know how good that backstage sort of vibe is at Future Shock. But I've been to other places like Britannia, LWF, and again, similar things, all very much kind of, you know, all working together, all want to, everyone to do the best they can and put on a good show. And, you know, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, uh, getting people through the doors and having, making sure they have a really good time doing what, you know, enjoying what we do. So uh, that's kind of what I love about it, you know what I mean? And, and everyone I've ever come across, so everyone, who has ever been sort of giving me advice has always been like, you know, just enjoy it. Like, that, and that's what I love about it. There's, there is no, I, I don't find any pressure. I'm assuming, you know, there probably is on some people, you know, and some people may have their own pressures. I've never had any pressure. I just think, you know, I'm going to go out there and do the best I can and enjoy it. Um, and then hopefully put a good show for everyone. And that's what I want to do. And I've never seen a bad match from yourself. So you're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move away from wrestling now. I know this is a wrestling podcast, but we all know mine are not professional in this life. That was the most professional I think I've ever been on a podcast, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, but now we'll go into the Jamie shitstorm of a proper interview. So tell me what makes you you. So not the wrestling side of it, not like what got you into the wrestling sort of stuff. Like what else is there like from your childhood or whatever that's made you into you? Kind of thing. You get what I mean, or is that just a little yeah, 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 yeah? Um, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've led pretty much a, as I say, a, a quite eventful life, but not really, you know, not the kind of 
Australia. And I, I'm from Wigan myself. I've lived in Wigan all my life. So been to University of Manchester. Um, my sort of shoot job is that I'm an actually assistant head teacher at a, a, a high school. Oh. Was, uh, yeah. So that's my uh, uh, 17 years of teaching is what I'm like. I come up in a conversation between you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm actually the head of maths uh, and assistant head at a large comprehensive school, Wigan. And that's my sort of day to day role. Um, I've done teaching since like I was 21. So, always been kind of working with students um, all the time, you know. I uh, always had a summer holiday. So, that's always been good. You know, let's get okay. from bonus. So, what you do on the side? Yeah, most of them do now. Yeah, most of them, uh, yeah, most of them know about it. You know, they'll see the social media stuff and things like that. that you know, Bright Strong's uh, thing, and it gets around. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all interested in it, really. You know, like, is it real? Is it fake? Is it this? Is it that? You know, do you get hurt? Have you ever been hurt? Do it. it I, I always think, you know, my, my big thing is about, in general, with anyone's relationships. And I think, you know, especially with young people and things like that. Um, so I've got discussions with them and showing them that we do have other lives apart from being in the classroom or walking around school, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's always been good. And uh, yeah, because I've always been like, just doing it, you know, I mean, it's, it's that extra level of conversation you can have with them. Um, yeah, the staff find it quite funny as well. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they've seen the clips, they've seen some of the clips on social media and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, they're very intrigued in the big T match. They saw some big, me and big T. Um, so, yeah, they were, yeah, they, they, it's never been an issue. Like, you know, they, they kind of they really enjoy it and they, it, uh, opens, it opens, it opens discussion points, I think, you know what I mean? To show that we're real people as well. We're not just these robots who come in and teach them, I think. You know, that's actually really amazing because. Can you imagine if you just like inspire so many kids now to get into wrestling just from being an assistant head? <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah, because um, I mean, you know, we, we, uh, the school of maths is a very big rugby based school, rugby league based school. Um, so do a lot of the league. So you know, that is kind of one of the side of stuff. I'm a big Wigan fan. I've been a Wigan season ticket holder for years and years and years, and um, so that was also another thing that sort of kind of you know got me talking to him as well about sport and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, my life has kind of been like that really, you know, um, you know, two kids, um, working, you know, a tough job, day in, day out kind of thing, and then the weekends are kind of wrestling if I can, uh, fitting the training around the hectic schedule of being a teacher. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, as a child, you know, you look great, you went to university, went to the college university, stayed around Wigan pretty much, um, Enjoyed sport, like I say, uh, did karate, um, black belt in karate, did that for a long time, um, played rugby league. But yeah, um, I've always just been well, uh, quite getting on with it, really, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's never, never boring being a teacher, so yeah. I never say it's, it's always something different. Yeah, yeah, now, like, head, yeah like teacher by day, I'm going to get battered in the ring at night, like absolute head case. <laughs> oh, it, uh, there's nothing better than having a rubbish stay at work. Uh, and then uh, going into the training in the PC and just uh, yeah, just throw some people around. It's it's a uh, it's its own kind of um, what do you call it therapy. Definitely. I was yeah, I was going to say if you had a really bad day, just uh, just throwing somebody out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know what? That's actually brilliant. Like, how has that not come up? Like, I don't yeah, yeah. Know. oh, that that is incredible. Like, gen- like normally I expect like you know. I don't even know what I expect anymore from you guys because all of you seem to just throw something out there and I'm just like, oh my God, really? So, yeah, you you all surprise me daily. I, I, I've, yeah. I've just to understand now that's what it is when I talk to you guys. It's just Somebody says one thing and that's it. That's all I'll focus on then. So I'm going to try and not focus on the teaching bit. <laughs> I might come back to it. You never know. Um, so we will put a bit of wrestling in there now. So... Growing up, what was it that attracted you to watching wrestling? Like, what got you into it? Was it WCW? Was it WWE? Or, let's be honest, WWF, because that's what it was when we were growing up. Like, what was it that pulled you in? Was it a particular person? Was it a match? Was it just, I was bored and started flicking through channels? <laughs> yeah, I'd kind of say it's the, I'm, I'm definitely a sort of attitude era kind of uh, young man. I was brought up in 13, 14 when it was peak attitude era time. Um, 
remember it also had Sky at the time, if I remember right. So I think it was mainly I did watch WCW on um Rev or what it was, it was something like that. It was some kind of channel. It was like that. Uh, TNT went it over here. Um so I used to watch WCW a bit probably a bit more, to be honest. And then if I get onto some of the WWF channels or on Sky One or whatever you caught up on the hour replay. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely the attitude era stuff that got me into uh, watching wrestling. Uh, I think, like, you know, kind of the maybe my early sort of memory of really watching wrestling and kind of be understanding the storylines that was like the Tyson Austin stuff. And, you know, I think Austin's definitely going to be kind of up there in the, the top five. You know what I mean? Easily because it's just, he, he's just, you know, going to work and be your boss, wasn't it? Essentially every day, you know. But, um, yeah, uh, but never, never, I was never really into the live side of it. You know, I don't, you know, I know there was a couple of things going on. I think GPW maybe was running Hindley, maybe near my me, but it's not something I went to watching live wrestling. Uh, and to be honest, I, I think I'd only been to one or two live wrestling shows before I even started wrestling myself. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's never something that I ever, ever went and watched was live wrestling, to be honest. Um, I think I went to a few shot show in um, 2017, maybe, and Pete Dunn was there. I remember that. Uh, but that was the only one I'd ever been to, I think. I made one of them, other shoulders. But yeah, so it was more TV based wrestling. And then went off to university, kind of like, and kind of drifted in and out. You don't really have Sky TV and all that kind of stuff then. And then so I came back to it in like 20, 2006, kind of a time, and started sort of catching what you can. I mean, I mean now it's just too much wrestling on TV. Can't, don't have time to watch it all, to be honest. You know, 12 hours a week or something like that, just trying to go through all different companies. Um, but yeah, growing up, it was definitely uh, the whole attitude era just drew me in. And uh, I think it did for a lot of teenage people, teenage, teenage, uh, 18 to 18, your 18 to 30 mark, it was key then, and it was for everyone in then, I think. Yeah, I mean, I was an anomaly because I started watching in 96, so I was six years old. So probably not something any parent wants a six-year-old to sit and watch, but, you know, I, I managed to get away with it for, for years, and, you know, did did you have it round where you were brought up like because we had shows that were like that were put on at like Doncaster Dome and stuff and it was basically had people dressing up as the Attitude Era stars so you had people dressing as Kane and the Undertaker and I think we even had the Legion of Doom and stuff. Did you have that in Wigan as well? Cause... Yeah, definitely. It was definitely a thing at that time, wasn't it? Where you know they were trying to uh, cash off the uh, WWE and make sure you know that these are recognisable people. So let's say. Uh... Best people that like him. Yeah, I remember that was a big thing back then. I know, like, I got offered, I think my grandparents were like, come on, we'll take you to the show. And I was like, no, I don't know who those people are. No. So they took my brother instead, and he's got this awful photo of him just with the Legion of Doom next to him. And my brother looks bigger than them. <laughs> How does a child look bigger than grown men? Like, what's happened in here? <laughs> like, this is why I think, why did we have uh, such a good relationship with wrestling because of things like that it's like, but in saying that why do we still watch this thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like same as you I obviously I dipped in and out because obviously Sky and going to uni things like that so I was the same have you ever then like gone back and watched any of the bits that you missed or do you just think nah, I'll leave that there like <laughs> Uh, yeah, when the network came out, and that was a big thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of sort of oh, look at what's going on, what they're, what they're sort of miss, and you know, you tried to, or oh, oh, I watched through all the Raws from, I don't know, 1999 onwards and kind of thing, and you know, I missed. But I, I kind of do remember up to, I think it was something about 2001, I remember up to kind of watching there, I thought I must have missed a bud chunk there. I remember, I remember Brock Lesnar and people like coming in in that era of 2004 with Bandy Orton and Brock and everyone sort of came through as well. Um, so yeah, I've done, and then I kind of gone back and watched bits and bobs, and you kind of just know the main stories anyway. From you know, kind of kept, kept probably kept, kept watching the pay views every so often and stuff. You know, as a unit, not really watching the day in day out or week in week out storylines. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, and it, it, it peaks and drops in it. You know, do we really come some hungry? As I'm years, which really good, then it dips off for a few years and whatever. And, and we have a good few shit years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then you really question why you're a wrestling fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so did any of that, like, help you, like, push you to the wrestling thing? Or was it just, obviously, you know, doing the rugby thing, that's, you know, that's physical yeah. in itself. Like, 
did liking wrestling help push you towards it or was it just a thing of I think I can rock the shit out of this and I can do it? It did, um, in, in some ways. Uh, like I said, I was ever, I, I, I'm really, if I'm really honest, I was, I, I was like, oh, I'll watch wrestling religiously. It's not been, that was something I wasn't doing that at the time. Uh, the story of me getting into wrestling, we uh, go back to 2017. Uh, it was when I first ever like walked into a uh, into a training place. Um, um, and I'd seen it, and my wife got me it as a birthday present, a uh, beginner's oh. course, for a birthday present. Just because I like wrestling, I, I watched it a few times, and she knows, and knows, we'll watch different WrestleManias and stuff together and whatever. Um, so wife said I've, I've seen this place in Manchester that's been in training um, for beginners wrestling you want to have a go yeah go on then and so she paid for a course of four weeks and but now she regrets it so <laughs> not every weekend wrestling but you know um, yeah. week four in Manchester where I trained uh, did beginners course now it's done the beginners course so Troy Ryan and Chris Anderson were both Whereas the asset Stephen Cross, he was also doing his course together. Yeah. Uh, back in 2017. Um, so when we first got, when we all finally debuted in Future Shock and our kind of like first ever show together, because we did one show last year, where we were first time we'd all be on the same show together. A uh, big deal because that's the first time we walked in. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was kind of a, off, the, off the cuff kind of, well, I've seen this. I said, do you want to go training? Oh, yeah, go on then. And then, yeah. I didn't keep up with it. 2017, long as a long time ago now. Um, you know, 31, 32 then. Um, I went in and enjoyed it. Uh, but then I, there was just at that time changing to a new role, and a new job. I was changing schools and into a new role. So I didn't really have time to go regular training. Um, and then I think I left it six months, went back, tried it again. I think then I injured, I injured the back, I think, or something. I injured something at that time. But then I kind of came out for a year. <laughs> but it wasn't until just before, so like sorry, four years really, before lockdown. And I just sort of got back into it again. And then yeah. the lockdown happened. Um, but yeah, and then, uh, then, I, then, I went, then after lockdown, is when I started at a few shot PC, really, was when it kind of went, I'm going to say it seriously now, you know what I mean? When I make it, it I think, you know, the whole COVID thing had shot the whole world and kind of thing. I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm getting on here now. Let's try it. Uh, I'd, I'd broken my hand I think just before COVID again wrestling just on a on it and then I've, I've been very lucky in the ring I've never actually injured myself in the ring you know in any kind of serious way at the moment you know, touch wood um, but yeah and I took a, I took a back bump in the in a training and uh, just caught my hand on the back of someone's heel he broke my hand so but then it took about six months six months around about just before just before 2020 um, so then after 2020 I thought we're going to start on this now and we can go push and obviously uh, after after the sort of like first lockdown when we started getting back into training that's when it sort of all took off really and I thought I'm going to take it seriously now I'm going to try and go every week and try and make if we're going to do it let's do it you know what I mean yeah it, it's, it is a weird thing because like you said 2020 not that long ago like mm. if you're as good as you are like that that is a testament to not only yourself but to you know the people who trained you because that's incredible. Like, I mean, I, I still think when you said 2017, I was like, that's not even that long ago, but it kind of is. <laughs> no, it sounds, it doesn't sound, doesn't sound, does it? But then you think, actually, it's six, seven years ago now, yeah. Yeah, it's like we're in 2020. Now. Where, where's that yeah. time frame gone? But, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, but honestly, getting bought that as a present, like to learn how to wrestle, like, I genuinely think <laughs> I got that for my husband. He's breaking half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted now just to like say, here, yeah, here's a gift. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> go learn how to wrestle. And he'd be like, no, <laughs> not <I'm> then. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody had given me that years ago, I'd have jumped all over it. Right now, my body does not work at all. <laughs> so getting that for me either wouldn't, wouldn't be great. But it, it'd be something. Like, I've always wanted to wrestle. Like, that was my dream growing up. Like, from being, like, starting watching it at six. It was my dream to, like, yeah, I want to be a wrestler. That is what I want to do. I want to be like Lita. You know, I want to fly through the air, like, you know, get out of all the guys. And yeah, like, tried it once. Not not technically because, like, it wasn't a wrestling school. I'll be honest. It was basically the world's worst, like, trampoline with wood on it. I don't even know. And yeah, it was painful. And genuinely, that's why my body doesn't work anymore. <laughs> 
So don't do it in your own back garden, kids. Like, there's a lesson for you. Yeah. Definitely not. Go to a proper school. <laughs> yeah, oh. the 2020, like I said, from 2020 onwards, I just sort of pushed on um, and kind of just got my head down. I thought, I'm going to, you know, I'm getting on. I need to do it. If we're going to take this seriously, let's do it. And let's get training regularly and get into a bit of shape and, and to do it. Um, yeah, and then two years later, I was uh, making a debut. So, you know, it's just, it worked out really well in the end. That is it's incredible. It really is. And I mean, like you said, in December, your challenge for the Future Shock Championship, like, I had, I mean, obviously I didn't bet on it, but I, I would have had money on you winning that title. Like, just based on, like how your year had gone and I mean you were unsuccessful but genuinely I think you're going to be the one to dethrone Joe because like you've just been incredible and yeah like, yeah I don't even know the words just aren't there to describe it because I genuinely have to watch your matches to understand why I can't describe it because there's, there's just isn't a way to do it it's like it is just something, and I mean, especially just the dynamic between you and Tony as well. Like those matches, like I said, I said earlier, they were just absolutely incredible storytelling matches. And, you know, for anybody who needs to see like storytelling done in wrestling, needs to watch that, those series of matches because absolutely incredible. It really was. And especially that last one when he came out in the flannel jacket and, you know, and, like just the intensity that you had, like, just, yeah, face. As soon as you walked out, you had the angriest looking face in the world. And like that was the first time my husband had been to a future shop show. And he said, What match should I be watching out for? And I was like, Bryak and Tony, like that is the one match. I don't give a shit if you don't watch any of the other things, just watch that match. And he was sat there happy as Larry because you had all the weapons out and everything. And he's just <laughs> sat there loving life. And I think he enjoyed that match more than I did, but genuinely it was it was just absolutely incredible and you could tell there'd been that big build of a story and like the time and effort that had gone into that match. It was just, honestly, it was incredible. So you both need like something for that. And like for you, I think it needs to be that world title. So it, Joe needs to look out because like, <laughs> my Joe's money's like, fun. your name is on that net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was Joe, Joe's been that far in my side because obviously he was the one I attacked on my so that first introduction to Future Shock and then the last match I've had in Future Shock so far is Joe. So, um, yeah, he's been that fun in my side. He's, he's, he's the only one who's got two bit, two wins over Bray Strong in Future Shock. So, um, but one is Big Guns Joe and one is Joe Blazer. So we'll... Yeah, yeah it's different. It's different. Yeah, different people. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I've actually just thought, you know, seeing as though, you know, you are, like, now you've told me you are a teacher and, you know, I'm guessing you have to be at school in the morning. That's a weird sentence to say to a grown man. <laughs> it's like I was saying earlier, I say some weird sentences now that shouldn't ever sound right, but they do in the wrestling context, which is really bizarre. Um, so I'm really conscious now of time because it is getting on a bit. Obviously, you'll probably, you know, have either things to do or you'll want to go to sleep like a normal human being. Um, just like have we got anything coming up obviously i know we're filming now and it's like the end of february by the time this goes out it'll probably be the end of march next month is march right like yeah <laughs> it's so bad with my days um so have we got anything coming obviously we know we've got to love of wrestling this weekend what's coming up for bryak strong like in march maybe early april if we know that far well so yeah i've got obviously i've got um the Gangrel match with the Northwest Saviors. Uh, so it's me and Northwest Saviors versus uh, Gangrel and Forbidden Planet uh, coming up this Saturday, which also come out after this has been recorded. Uh, so I hope that was a great match. Going forward with Future Shock, uh, I've not been on the shows the last two months, uh, but uh, watch, this, watch this space, I'd sort of say. Is that, um, you know, I'm not done in Future Shock yet by a long way. So um, I'll just uh, keep an eye out on Future Shock shows. Whether they're announced or not, I might be there. So we'll see. It'll be there. <laughs> It'll be there. Uh, like selling some merch. It'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that merch. Um, and then, yeah, uh, going forward, Thank I've got no other plans. <laughs> uh, going forward, I've got no other sort of plan or something I can say about it yet at the moment um, going forward. But um, I am sort of getting out there and just, again, it's one of them things again, you know, um, being a teacher's. 
a time consuming job and um I couldn't possibly do it every weekend if I if I if I get the bookings or I was getting the bookings and doing every weekend. I couldn't possibly do it with time and children, you know, all the other things in life. Um but yeah, I'm uh, I'm sure I'll be getting around uh the UK and hopefully getting a few more places this year. Um uh, well, that's I'm sure I'm sure it'll be a thing. Um and like I say, yeah, um I'll be able to be around sort of the Brit West scene. I'm going to be kind of, you know, we we'll always see with different shows and things like that anyway, whether I'm wrestling or not, or just uh, helping out or just, you know. You know. Being a fan. Uh, so, being a fan, exactly. You know, that's the, yeah, that's, being a wrestler's great. Being a fan's and sometimes even better. And that's, I think that's what I sort of say. Mm. I was say, especially, was it December when we were at Atomic and it was, you and Pele <laughs> eating pizza <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> the best days, I tell you. The best times. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, that's... Best wrestling days, just chilling out with friends, eating pizza, watching some good wrestling. Like, what more do you want in life? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, we know to check you out at Future Shock. We know that, obviously. There is a lot more uh, wrestling promotions to check out. Hopefully, we will see Friak on most of them, if not all of them, because, you know, amazing wrestler. So, needs to get out there having a real job kind of thing like that a little bit but you know we'll, we'll get there we'll, we'll get there and you know you will be one of the biggest things in the uk i'm sure of it um so let us know this is your time now tell us where people can find you on your socials like if you have any dates in mind i know obviously it's hard doing the filming now and it's not coming out for a while so obviously it's a bit hard with what dates you can probably give people but so your socials anything like that and if you want to, you know, call somebody out, you feel free. I keep trying to get somebody to cut a promo on somebody on this show, and nobody's done it yet. <laughs> well, um, so, yeah, you can find me on um, on Twitter. Well, not Twitter now, it's X. Uh, only kids. I'll call it uh, So, yeah, it's, it's not Twitter, it's always Twitter. Uh, you can go on X, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, all under Brian X Strong. Uh, most of my, you know, I post quite regularly on the what I'm doing and stuff, so uh, you can very much catch me on the... Um, yeah, uh, let me to call someone out. Like I say, uh, there's one person that I really want to match with. Uh, oh, it's two, oh, there's a few people, but I'm going to say it right now, and I will call him out. And that's, that's Sam Bailey, because there was still a chair shot that happened in that uh, Tony match that's not been dealt with yet. Um, so, yeah, Bailey, I'm watching you. I'm not training, mate, but, you know, watch your back. Oh, uh, oh I want to see. I want to see this feud now. Oh. There we go. Sam, you're on notice, boy. <laughs> oh. oh, gosh, that's great. Like, that's made my day. Like, somebody's <laughs> called somebody out on my show. That's, that's just great. Like, I'm loving it. Yay. I swear now, if this happens before this show goes out, I'm coming for you. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm really not. Like, I, I regret saying that because you have a chair. I'm just, no. Anyway. <laughs> right, Axe, thank you so much for joining me tonight honestly i mean this has been like how long in the making because we've been trying to get this done yeah we I mean, arranged a few times haven't it yes life happens but you know we've got it done now and honestly it has meant the world to me that you've come on the show i've had the i've had the trio now i've had you dr proctor and pele i've done the trio Yay. Yay. Yeah, that'll be a trio at one time yeah you had you the phd um prince hunter doctor so that's it it's, it's, that'll be a thing at some point sure yeah will. honestly that like that the t-shirt is already there like it oh, yeah, needs already to made. happen it needs to happen oh surprise cap <laughs> anyway honestly thank you so much for joining me tonight it has been an absolute pleasure and you know guys please go and check Briac out go and watch Future Shark you know watch the literally go on YouTube I'm sure you will find some stuff like when you follow Briac on his socials there's so much stuff on there. Genuinely check out the video that I said with the, the random woman screaming because that is glorious. Um, like I said, though, please, please, please go follow this guy. Absolutely incredible. Buy his merch because the Mr. Strong shirt is just phenomenal and it just makes me smile every time I see it. Um, that's all for this week. Um, we will be back next week with another guest. Don't know who it is, but it'll be a good one. Then don't forget to keep it real here on the Real Wrestling Podcast. Bye, guys. Keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this has been us keeping it real. 
on the Real Wrestling Podcast.